right, welcome to the Army Roundtable. Today is the 7th of September, 2023, and a special guest, Scott from Stratagem Trade. I've known Scott for a, quite a few years now, and I've uh, been to a seminar or two, and Scott's been with Aramir uh, lots of times, and uh, always a pleasure to have you, Scott. And I know you're doing this mini class this coming weekend, and this is kind of a sneak peek of what's uh, you're, like you're going to have uh, in a, a full, full, full-fledged two-day course. So uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you, and uh, welcome back as always. Oh, thanks, Tom, and, and welcome, everybody. Thanks for showing up, and I appreciate it. Um, as, as Tom said, we're having a mini class this weekend, and actually, I was in Tom's last. What do you call your your, your was, sessions? The that mini was the class. butterfly and condor workshop. Workshop. That's what you use. Okay, I didn't want to say seminar when you meant workshop, but it's. Um, I was in there and teaching roughly the same materials I am, and I did the same class last night but for those who are in my company and saw what i did last night in our pot class you're going to see a very similar class again i did update some of the slides to make it a little bit more um visually understandable where there's more transitions where you can actually see the magic of newton's cradle and so it'll be slightly different if you've seen this already. And in your workshop, I did some of this as well. And it's just, it happens to be one of my favorite topics. I've been doing a lot of it in my pod class and people were just like demanding to learn more and more and more. And But there's so much to it that even if I teach it for two hours a night for two months on um, Every Wednesday, I'm not going to cover everything. Really, the only way to be able to cover all the material is have a dedicated weekend of just focusing on one topic. And that's why we're having the mini class this weekend. I'm going to go relatively fast. I've got a huge amount of slides, but the slides are required in this amount of volume to tell a story. And so I'm going to go through slides really fast if you guys... um you know, think I should slow down, just let me know. But it, it's pretty logical. I didn't have any problems last night when I did it. So let's get started. And again, this this really covers two topics, the short butterfly and Newton's cradle. And I understand most people don't know what Newton's cradle is. Don't worry about it. it, it but that little toy that everyone's seen on desks, they have them on, I don't know, I think it's it's been in like 12 Hollywood movies where it's been sitting on someone's desk. Actually is what our graph will look like at the end. In other words, you'll see risk on one side and we'll scoot it somewhere else. And it, it's it's pretty magical. So let me get started. Have to go through the disclaimer that says I'm giving out education, not advice. Please read this disclaimer, any disclaimer on Tom's site and my site before participating. And again, this has to do with the special class, and this is sort of a mini class preview for the class that's starting on Saturday and Sunday. And I want to thank Tom for all the hard work he does. He's a beast. And he actually created a separate spreadsheet for the short butterfly in anticipation of this class. And so he's actually ahead of me with his homework. So thanks a lot, Tom. Hey, um, and here, here, this is what I was talking about. I started out on that top left pit. Then I went to the pit on the right, which is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And then the rest of my career was spent in this pit in the bottom that was the OEX pit that eventually became the S&P 500 pit. So um, Tom would stand well let me show you just for because you brought him up right before the class started um tom would usually stand right here and i stood right down here and then he would run and here every time the market dropped because he wanted to buy puts from the exchange but um That's that's my story. And um, 
still, I'm trying to relearn where all the drawing tools are. I've taught here before. I've shown you guys this slide. I'm going to put it in there so you guys can have a copy of the slide, but it just describes who I am and what the company I'm with and everything else, just for your own edification. But other than that, let's get going. And again, it's about the mini class. It's a double feature on Saturday and Sunday. It starts at 9 a.m. Central Time. And this is going to be, there's always a bonus. I always give a bonus. Usually it's a day of trading um, or sending out trade examples, something like this. But a lot of people wanted to learn about layer spreads because I've been doing a couple of those of late. And they're like, wait, the, the profit potential of this thing is so wide, I don't know how we're going to miss making money. And they want to learn more about it. So I'm going to have a bonus um, material on the layer spread as well. But let me get started with what I'm going to be talking about tonight. And again, I'm going to start with the short butterfly. This will be the easiest way to learn what the Newton's Cradle is and why we need to learn the Newton's Cradle. If you're going to be short butterflies, short condors, short iron butterflies, knowing how to wiggle out of them when they become a real problem is imperative. There's nothing more uncomfortable than being short a butterfly or short a condor and watching the market just park right where the maximum risk is and not move. And you're thinking to yourself, do I bite the bullet and just pay up and get out of this trade? Or do I wish there was a way to wiggle out of it? Well, there is. And that's what we're going to show you in a couple minutes. So let me start with the short butterfly. It's pretty simple. I'll start with the evolution of the butterfly, of how I started teaching it from a short perspective. I, most of my students love the long butterfly. They have a defined amount of risk. They have a much larger profit potential, and they're just happy with it. When they put in 30, 40, 50 cents into a butterfly that can make $5, they start getting the, the Christmas feeling, like Santa Claus is going to be coming by the end of the day. Most of the time, as adults, we're disappointed when we look outside the fireplace in the morning and don't see presents around the tree. That is what happens with most butterflies. They go out worthless. And so I said, if you guys are spending so much for butterflies and they keep going out worthless, why do you think the professional floor traders are selling them to you? If you're buying them, someone's selling them to you. And people were just questioning, why would a floor trader risk 30 cents or risk $4.70 to take in 30 cents? And so I started teaching the class. And I started teaching it in December 4th of 2019, how to sell butterflies, why we sell butterflies, et cetera. And it was part of the growth cycle I tried to get students through. And when we start out learning about options, we always start out with what a long call is, a long put is. And I think almost everybody then learned what a vertical spread or a collar is next. From there, once you learn about vertical spreads, you learn about stacking them. You take a long vertical spread, a short vertical spread, put them together, and you got a long butterfly. Well, that's where most people stop. They don't like getting into the short butterflies. and But that's the next layer of growth in the education cycle. And then once you mature and get comfortable with the short butterfly, and I actually embrace short butterflies, you learn how to hedge those so that when they do rarely go against you, you know how to wiggle out. Now, there's three reasons to sell butterflies instead of buying them. Okay, the first reason is they're too expensive to buy. And I'm going to go through every one of these three things in detail in a moment. And I'm going to get going pretty fast. And Tom, if you see people telling me to slow down and I don't notice it, let me know. But the second reason is to spread off a bad leg. You buy a vertical spread, the market goes the wrong way. I'm sure that doesn't happen to any of your students, but it remember. happens. <laughs> it always <laughs> happens to me. It's about 50% of the time, as a matter of fact, 
I buy a vertical spread, call or put, and it will go against me. That's the nature of markets. That's why options are priced off of the Monte Carlo models. And they're priced off of a binomial, Brownian binomial model. Statistically, you're going to be wrong half the time. It's what's the difference between a great trader and someone who loses money is how they handle wiggling out of those losses. So I was actually introducing my students to the short butterfly to get them to find a better way to wiggle out of a vertical spread loss. And they, they wanted nothing to do with it at first. Then I circled back later on and they became addicted to it. I must have taught it poorly the first time. But the second time, they became addicted to it. And now, I, not a day goes by where people are like, can we sell some butterflies into the clothes? Now, this is really important. And we're going to go into this in a little bit of detail in a minute. But it's really important for scalpers, people who are like scalping vertical spreads and zero DTE traders who find themselves wanting to, instead of close out a vertical spread, find a way of spreading it off so they can stop the pain when they're wrong, but still keep something on in position that can make more money uh, or make some of that money back. They hate closing out a trade at a loss because it's so permanent. And so they'll find a way to spread it off so that they got a second chance of making the money back and then some. And then the third thing is last hour of trading games. Okay, there's some games that can be played in the last hour of trading, especially as time decay erodes out all the time premium of options and these butterflies really start opening up and condors really start opening them up in value. There's some games that can be played and I'll show you that as well. Let me start by teaching a short butterfly by quickly explaining the long butterfly. And I know every one of your students is very sophisticated, Tom, and understands what a long butterfly is, but I, it's going to take one second because it helps explain the short butterfly. Let's say we go out and buy the 4490, 4500 call spread for $5. Everyone here probably recognizes the graph right here, sees that, yep, that looks like the 90, 4,500 call spread for five bucks. That's accurate. But when you spend five bucks to make five bucks, the risk reward doesn't feel comfortable, especially when the market starts ticking down a little bit. You may get spooked out. Want to minimize your risk exposure. And a lot of people spread it off or turn it into a butterfly. So they'll go out and sell the 4,500, 4,510 call spread at 440. And now they're into a butterfly for 60 cent debit. Here you see the green line is the long call spread. The red line is the short call spread. When you group them together, how do they net out? They net out with this yellow line that's about to pop up. And there is the graph of a butterfly for a 60 cent debit. Now, when I take out all those lines and removing those ghost lines that were created from each individual spread and just show you the resulting butterfly graph, you get this. That's the long butterfly. People love it. 60 cent debit, $60. Anybody with a paper route can afford it. And look, can make close to a thousand bucks. Love it, love it, love it. But what are the odds of making money on this? What are the odds that the market is going to close in that profit zone? We see this graph and we get very comfortable with it. Here's a different butterfly. It's long 10 contracts of a $5 butterfly for 30 cents. We have $300 of risk, but here we can make $4,700 in profit. Once we get done, whether it was as a package or we did a vertical spread and it started going against us and it started going in our favor, 
the emotion and adrenaline's going. We finally say, you know what? I I, I just want to get out. I don't know where the market's going. I'm going to spread it off. And you get into this butterfly. What happens? Most people immediately get a sense of comfort that, okay, my maximum loss is defined and I've got this big profit area. But what are the odds you're going to make money? How often have you guys bought a butterfly for 30 cents and made $5 on it? Okay, now it's happened to me. It happens to me maybe a couple times a year. But when I'm trading so many butterflies like I do, it's bound to happen a couple times a year. Most of the time, though, they all go out worthless. And the reason for that is hitting on a butterfly, having that market close inside the strikes of the butterfly depends on many variables. The most important variable is volatility. How much the market is moving that day. The more the market moves, the less likely it's going to close inside of a certain range. It's harder to predict the range of where this can close as the market's moving greater and greater ranges throughout the day. The VIX at a 14% vol has a one-day expected range with the S&P at 4,500 of about 39.7 points. You kick volatility up to an 18, and the same one-day expected range goes to 51. You can see how volatility is a major component of the predictability of a butterfly. The tighter the range, the easier you can place a butterfly strategically that has a chance of hitting. Now, you can think of the market as a roulette wheel, especially when the VIX is on, say, like a 14. Okay, and like I said earlier, the foundation ops and pricing is based on geometric Brownian motion or G on uh, GBM math, or what most people have been probably heard on TV once a year or twice a year with somebody who's pretty educated on CNBC, they'll talk about the Monte Carlo pricing models. When you do a butterfly, this is essentially what you're doing. You're hoping the market, that little P that's spinning around, lands in your butterfly at expiration. Keep in mind that a roulette wheel has 18 black and 18 red and then two green slots, a zero and a double zero. And that's a total 38 slots. Remember what I said that the 14 day or the VIX on a 14% has an expected range of about 39 points. Sort of about the same amount of points as or slots on a roulette wheel. So it works as a great analogy of what are the odds of hitting on this butterfly? And when you look at the range or expected range from 4,500 to 4,538, the odds aren't good. Now you get this butterfly on and you got these huge expectations. The market starts going towards your butterfly and you're getting all excited. And gets really emotional. Then the market goes the other way. And you're like, oh man, I think my butterfly's doomed. And all day long, you're staring at the market. Hoping you hit on this fly. But very rarely do people come close to making the maximum profit on a butterfly. The odds are not there. Now, the market does have a tendency to gravitate towards big round numbers. Especially last year, we hit a lot of big round numbers last year. This year, not so much. But it's still hard to hit on a butterfly. And that's why Tom and me and other instructors out there teach butterfly derivatives or wider butterflies to get a bigger range. Now, the last long butterfly that almost hit a home run occurred to me um, on July 14th expiration. Okay. And I got the whole class involved and just sent out a link and saying, I'm buying the 05 
4,500 put spread for 75 cents. Why? The market was just drifting down all day long. And 4,500 seemed like where a magnet that the market wanted to go to. And you'll see when I show you a graph in a minute why I thought that. So we bought that. Some people got all mixed up and got the wrong thing. And then so I bought another one just to make sure I can get filled. I ended up with three. And then I said, you know what? I won't go on a butterfly off. The market kept selling off, but expiration was also approaching. So even though the market was selling off, the spread I wanted to sell to turn this into a butterfly was not going up in value quickly. Okay, the deltas were working in my favor, but time decay was working against me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to hedge off one of these extra put spreads, and I turned it into a box. You can see I bought the 4,500.05 call spread for $4 to make it a box for people who just wanted to get out of the trade. And those who wanted to stay in the trade, I turned it into two butterflies by selling the 4,500.44.95 butterfly at 60 cents. So now I'm into a butterfly two times for 15 cents if you don't count the profit made on the box. If you count the profit made on the box, I'm into it for a nickel debit. Then the market sold off. I sold out one butterfly, took in some money, and the remaining butterfly was this graph at the bottom. Now, let me ask, does anyone have a problem with this graph here? If you buy two butterflies, it opens up a little bit. You sell one of them out to get a profit so that the remaining butterflies on for a credit. It's kind of ideal, right? I mean. Yeah, you're playing with the house. You're playing with the house. Yeah. I mean, every one of my students was, you know, you know, ecstatic. And they're like, can we do more of these? I'm like, lighten up, Francis. Because. <laughs> <laughs> expiration was approaching. Time decay was getting too nasty. I didn't want to take any more risk. I'm like, we'll do one tomorrow if you want. Right now, it's too dangerous. But we have one butterfly on. And I actually had two butterflies on because I did an extra contract. But this is why we took the leg in the first place. We had just been drifting down slowly all day long. It, okay? And... The, back in July, we were just bouncing around between the big even numbers all month long, if you recall. I'm like, well, I guess we're going back to 4,500. And so let's put a butterfly in at the 4,500 so I can see if anything happens. And what happened? In the last 10 minutes of the day, you see 1459 right there. This is Chicago time. That would be 2.59 Chicago time. One minute to go until expiration. Where was the index at? 4,570, 4,580, somewhere around there. Within a dollar of 4,500. I asked my students, you want to sell it out or you want to keep it? Because now we're down to one contract. Normally, I always have at least two so that I can sell half and keep the other half. That way, I'm always miserable but always happy, okay? Because if I sell it out and it goes to $5 exactly and I sell it for less than 5 I'm pissed at myself for not having the, the patience and guts to try to make the full 5 bucks. But if I do hold on to it and try to make the full five bucks, what happens? We bounce or go down more and it goes out worthless. And then I'm mad at myself for not taking the profit when I could. So I always have at least two contracts. So I can sell out one and be half right and half wrong at all times. And so I put an order in to sell one contract at 350 and I was filled. That's the actual fill prices. Okay, and you can see I was filled with that. Look at that time. 
1459.44, 16 seconds before the closing bell. Someone paid 350 for it. Now, everybody's hooting and hollering. We're going to pin it. We're going to pin it. This is awesome. Coward, you sold it at 350. You left a dollar fifty on the table. Now, I want you guys, and this is rhetorical. What would you have done? Would you sell it and take your three fifty, or would you pin it, or go for the pin? I should say. Let's look at what happened in the last one minute trading. With one minute left, buy programs kicked in. The market jumped. And we settled at 4505.42. What's our butterfly worth? It went out worthless. It went out dead worthless. Why? Because we had the 05, 4500, 95 butterfly on, and we closed outside the ranges any questions the one contract I had on that I left to see if I can make the full five bucks went out worthless thank god I sold one of them at 350 okay now this is about as good as you can get at pinning a butterfly. One minute left, the thing's at 350. But anything can happen inside. Look at this. Look at the time in the top left corner and where I got filled. 1459.44. 16 seconds left. And in 16 seconds, we went up $5. Ouch. It would have gone out worthless in 16 seconds later, from 350 to zero in 15 seconds, 16 seconds. Instead, I told these guys, you don't like this. If you don't like this, why not sell them? Okay. Why not sell the butterfly and turn it upside down? Sell this butterfly and collect the 60 cent credit. And what happens? People hate it. Why do they hate it? They hate the risk versus reward. Again, I taught this in 2019. I could not get anyone to do it. They're like, look at that little tiny, thin, sizzling buttock meat of green there compared to that big ocean of red. I could lose a fortune. Often, if I'm short a butterfly, the market just sits there. And, and I don't know what to do. I don't. I get trapped, and then I end up paying up to get out of it real quick. And... It's just not worth it. I'd rather be long it and have it go out worthless. Well, I tried it again and several months ago and tried convincing people again. And this time I did it in a class during trading hours and said, let's sell a butterfly to open. I'm going to get you guys comfortable with it. And there's a reason why I had people selling wanting to learn how to sell butterflies to open up and i said one of it's because it's too expensive to buy well that's not good enough for some people okay the other is to spread off a bad leg especially with zero dte traders in the last hour trading games i'm going to show you all three real quick first of all too expensive to buy example this was the prices yesterday two hours before the close the at the money butterfly when the index was at about 45 uh, 44 63 
had prices like this on the calls. So if I wanted to buy a butterfly there, what's it going to cost? Well, I got to buy the 60 call for 510. I have to sell two of the 65s at two. That brings in four. Then I buy one of the tails of the 70 strike at 55 cents. That's a dollar 65 on a butterfly that can only make five dollars and still has two hours to go until expiration. It's probably going to go out worthless. It's going to put me in the poorhouse. This is the Baltic Avenue of butterflies to buy. I can't think of a dumber thing to do than pay $1.65 for a butterfly that has two hours to go until expiration. Here's the graph. I only have $3.35 on each side of the midpoint of room to wiggle around. Even if we're at 44.65, this market can move 335 up or down in seconds. I hate it. But the reason I wanted to show my students this is to spread off bad legs. Because my students send me emails all the time and say, Scott, I got this messed up position. I don't know what how to get out of it or what to do with it. Should I just leave it, et cetera? And I take a look at it. And almost everyone's got butterflies on, long butterflies. So I'll say, okay, how did you end up with this long butterfly? What did you pay for it? Why did you buy it? And they said, well, I was long a call spread and the market started going down, so I just turned it into a butterfly. Or I was playing around with put spreads and then the market started jumping and I couldn't sell it, so I just turned it into a butterfly to stop the bleeding. I said, okay, what about this? And this is what I said in 2019. These are the actual slides I pulled up to refresh some people's memories. Let's have a class where I'm purposely going to sell a butterfly to open. Why? To show you they're not that scary. They're not fun, but they're not scary. And right when the market opened up, I said, okay, guys, here's the graph. And this is where we put the trade on right there. The market had been open for about 40 minutes. I said, you want to get long or short? And everyone in my class said, the consensus was get long. I'm like, I agree with you. It looks like we're going up. So I'm going to get short. And I bought a put spread. Saying, I think we're going up. Everyone thinks we're going up. So I'm going to buy a put spread to show you how to sweat. And I bought a put spread. And I said, Here's the put spread I'm buying. I'm buying the 2520 put spread for a dollar. And again, 2019, the index was at 3100 in 40 or 50. And I said, now I'm going to give myself a stop. As soon as this market moves one strike against me, I'm out. So where would that be? There is my stop. One strike higher. Boom, market hit our stop, and I had to spread it off. Right when we hit there, I started spreading the trade off. Why? The worst experiences I've ever had in trading, and I venture to guess that most people here are very similar, is when they had a stop order in their head and they didn't listen to it. They buy a spread for two bucks and they say, if it gets down to a buck 50, I'm getting out. Then it gets down to a buck 50 and you're like, well, I already lost 50 cents. It looks like it's going to come back. I'll give it a little bit more room. Now it's down to a buck. You're like, oh man, I already lost a buck. What's 20 cents more? I'll get out if it gets down to 80 cents. Next thing you know, the spread you were going to get out of it at a buck and a half just went out worthless. So when I hit my stop, I'm very disciplined. And because my stop was one strike, I can guess what my spread will be worth one strike against me. All I got to do is move the option chain one strike, and that'll show me what the trade's worth after a one strike move against me. You see in the green box on the right, 
Then I bought the spread for a buck. It was trading for about a buck, buck ten. But after the move, it goes down to 80 cents. So now if I buy it for a buck or a buck ten and goes to 80 cents, I'm out what? 30 cents. A dollar ten minus 80 cents is 30 cents. So now the spread's at 80 cents from a dollar ten. What do I do with that spread? I can either sell it out, take my 30 cent loss. Nobody likes doing that because it becomes a finite reality. It becomes a true emotional, physical, actual loss. And people think there's no way I can make the money back. No one's thinking I'm going to save the 80 cents so I can put it into a new trade and make my money back. They're just thinking about their 30 cent loss is never going to be coming back. And so what most people will do is try to figure out a way to spread it off. So what else can we do? Well, we can go one strike lower. Remember, we bought a put spread. So we can go one strike lower and sell another put spread. In this case, one strike lower spread at the 2015 strike is trading for 70 cents. If I buy the spread for a buck 10, sell 70 cents. Now I'm into a butterfly for 40 cent debit. And you're thinking, okay, I was going to have a 30 cent loss if I close it. Instead, I'm in a butterfly for 40 cents. It's a little bit worse, but at least I got a chance to make the money back. Well, that's not all. That's not all you can do. What else do you do? Some people say, I'd rather turn it into a condor. I'll go another strike lower and sell the 1510 put spread at 60 cents be into a condor i'm only going to get 60 cents instead of 70 cents that i would have got with the butterfly but now i got a better chance of making the money back there's a wider range of profit potential with the condor okay now you're into a condor for 50 cents What else can you do? I asked my students, what else would you think about doing here? Some people said, well, roll it out in time. Yeah, you can do that. I got about six different answers. No one came back and said, turn it into a short butterfly. And I see the questions. I'll get to it in a minute. But I said, what about turning it into a short butterfly? And they're like, why would you do that? Well, here's why. I bought this spread for $1.10. The market moved one strike against me. So I know if I go one strike higher on my put spreads, it's probably trading for about $1.10, which is where it was at when the market was better positioned. In other words, I go one strike further out of the money or further in the money towards the at the money. And that'll be trading for a dollar ten. Now I bought a spread for a dollar ten. I sell another spread at a dollar ten. It's a short butterfly, but now it's in for zero. And knowing that most of the time it's going to go out worthless, what happens? Most of the time, I'm going to break even because it's just going to go out worthless, and I have no loss. Instead of making a butterfly for thirty cents. Or selling it out, excuse me, selling it out, taking a 30 cent loss, making a butterfly for 40 cents and watching that go out worthless and having a 40 cent loss, making it in a condor and possibly having a 50 cent loss. I make it a short butterfly for zero. And now I just got to hope between now and expiration, the market moves away from this trade. It goes down big or up big, and I don't have to worry about this short butterfly. And if, guess what, Murphy's Law kicks in and we're right in the same spot at expiration, don't sweat it. I'll show you what to do then. So this is actually yesterday's option chain. I was giving people another example with, in this case, call spreads. What if I bought the 70-75 call spread for $1.40? 
in the market mood, one point against me. Or excuse me, one strike against me. Five points against me. What would I do? Same analysis. I take the option chain of the spreads. Okay, and when I'm dealing with these spreads, here, let me show you this. Here's the price of the 70 call. Here's the price of 75 call. The difference is 140. Now, I buy this call spread for $1.40. The market moves against me. What's going to happen? The price of all the options are going to shift one strike, and the price of the spreads are going to shift one strike. So now, the spread I bought for 140 it's going to go down to 110. And I go through the same thing, the same analysis. Do I turn it into a butterfly, a condor? Do I box it off? Okay, and we're not going to go into boxing because it'll be too much of a time-consuming distraction. But what about a short butterfly? Well, let's take a look at it. I can close the trade at a loss. That'll be a 30-cent loss because I bought the spread for 140. If I sell it back out at 110 it's a 30 cent loss i can turn it into a long butterfly by going one strike further out of the money and selling the 7580 at 95 cents now i'm into a long butterfly for 45 cents or i can sell a spread that's closer to at the money against the long 70 75 spread so now i sell the 65 70 at 140 I'm into the short butterfly at zero. Here's the graph of it. All my students start throwing up. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. No, I get it. There's zero chance of making money. Nobody likes that. But look how wide the one day SD band is. What are the odds you're going to close inside of there? Let alone if you go down to the bottom of this band. They were going to close at that little pin prick at 4470. It's very small. It looks scary, but most likely it's going out worthless. And we have a fix, Newton's cradle, that I'll talk about in a second. But what else can you do? There's not too many butterflies. The morning of expiration that are near the money that I can't buy back for 30 cents. Now remember, tomorrow morning, whatever, wherever the market opens up at, you can try this out if, yourself if you want to blow 30 bucks. Whatever the at the money strike in the SPX is, try buying a butterfly for 30 cents. Nope. It may not fill instantly, but within a half an hour, it'll fill because some trader will have a position on. They'll want to clean it up and they'll like be looking in and say, hey, someone's trying to buy this butterfly for 30 cents. I'll sell it. It closes out my position, which would have probably expired worthless anyways. At least I get 30 bucks. I almost always get filled for 30 cents. Now, think. Slow down and think. Give yourself a mental break for a split second. Say, look, when I bought this spread, I paid 140. It went against me. If I sold it out at 110, I was going to lose 30 cents, right? That would have been locked in, done with, no chance of making the money back. Nobody likes doing that. What if I turn it into a short butterfly and two days later, as luck would have it, the market is right at that butterfly, and I start getting nervous. You can buy it back for 30 cents. You were going to lose 30 cents anyways. So the end result is no different. A 30 cent loss immediately or a 30 cent loss two days later, but you had a chance where the market could have gone down or up, and you would not have had to worry about closing the trade out. 
So you got a second chance of breaking even on the trade. And if it doesn't work out, you're still going to lose the 30 cents, but it's no worse. And once it starts getting worse and it, things throughout the day start making the fly look scarier and scarier and scarier, well, then we're going to wiggle out of it. And I usually wiggle out of it in the last hour of trading through Newton's Cradle because of the games that are going on and because there's no time value. Today, if you wanted to buy a $30 out-of-the-money put spread with one day to go until expiration, at the open, it was going to cost you $0.70. Cents. An hour later, it was down to $0.20 because the time decay is killing it. We're going to rely on that time decay to wiggle out of this. Here's how we do it. And again, I know there are a lot of people doing zero DTE trades out there. Okay, I saw where they're claiming half of the people out there are doing zero DTE trades. John, I saw your question. Don't worry about it. You've heard the story before. It was just an anecdote. It wasn't anything important. But I am saying it's a lot more than 50% of the traders out there doing zero DTE trades. 50% of the volume is zero DTE volume. The people trading the back months, the far back months, are the big guys. Usually the big guys are the more sophisticated um, retail trader. New people tend to focus on the front month. They're trading one, two, three, four, five, ten contracts at a time. The big guys are trading 100 contracts at a time. So if there's 1,000 contracts in the morning, or zero expiration, and 1,000 in the back months, but only one guy is trading the back month a thousand time contracts and a thousand people are trading a thousand contracts in the first month or today's expiration. Is that half of the traders trading the front month? Most of the traders are trading the front month. Half of the volume is the front month. So this is really important to zero DD DTE traders because I think probably 60, 70% of the, Retail customers are trading one-day options. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about with the short butterfly and how to hedge it. On June 23rd, I just called up a class. I had a lot of people sit there and text me and write me and email me and say, Scott, can you sell some more butterflies? I, I want to learn more about it. And said, okay, we're going to have a class in 30 minutes. Everybody hop on in 30 minutes, and I'll just do it right in front of you. And I put an order in to sell the 45, 50, 55 call butterfly at two bucks. It got filled when there was 10 minutes left until expiration. That's the graph of the butterfly sold at two bucks. These are real fill prices, guys. This is not some theoretical stuff. I actually got filled at 479, 152, 25 cents right in front of the class. And I said, okay, now I got to worry about hedging this thing because we had been stuck at around 4350 most of the day. And people were like, Scott, you're crazy selling the 50 butterfly. We've been there all day. We're going to close at 50. Maybe, maybe. That's okay. I'll wiggle out of it. And I literally was more relaxed than I am now. You don't hear any panic. And I got the recording of it. You can go and listen to the recording. What causes stress for people and the fear is when this market moves towards the center strike as expiration approaches. And they think, there's my loser right there. That's what's going to happen to me. But there's a phenomenon at the close of the day called order imbalances. The big firms are getting money in from governments for pensions. They're getting money in from schools, from individual investors, et cetera, 
and they have to put the money to work immediately. Other funds are getting redemptions. Somebody's pulling a million dollars out, so they have to sell a million dollars of stock. So money is going in and out all day long, but mostly at the close is where the funds do all their adjustments because they know what the net result of redemptions or additions for the day are going to be. And then in the last half an hour, they start giving out early market and close order and balance indications. Here's where we were yesterday. 62 million on the buy side, 83 million on the buy side, 109 million on the buy side. And then in the last 10 minutes of the trading is the final number. And people have to stick to that number. If you committed to buy a billion dollars of stock, you got to buy a billion dollars of stock. You're locked in at the last 10 minutes. This phenomenon causes extreme volatility in the last 10 minutes of trading. All I need is a little bit of movement, $5 in the SPX cash in the last 10 minutes. And I can wiggle out of pretty much anything. So here, you see the short butterfly in that red rectangle. You see the loss area on the fly with 43.50 in the center being the worst possible price. But if the SPX closes anywhere inside of there, Okay, anywhere inside of there, we got some issues. And here's the sad thing, or the scary thing, the thing that was causing a lot of issues. The last hour trading, 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock Chicago time, the market was inside the range of that butterfly the whole time. How many people would be nervous being short that butterfly and looking in the last hour of trading, it has not deviated between the strikes. Does that create some stress and pucker? A little bit of anxiety, emotions, cortisol going through your system? Like, don't worry about it. I told my students, don't worry about it. What's going to happen here? One of a couple things is going to happen. All I need is it to squirt for a split second above or below that line, and I'm good. And we almost always do. Then what? Then what, Scott? It's getting close. There's only a couple minutes left. How are you going to get out of this? Well, with 10 minutes left in trading, I was filled on the butterfly. I immediately told people what I was going to do. I'm going to put in a put spread order and a call spread order. Hopefully one of them fills. And you're going to be learning that on Saturday and Sunday. In this case, if the market goes up, we're going to be buying a put spread. If the market goes down, we're going to be buying a call spread. And that's going to wiggle us out. That pink rectangle in the center is the risk area. So I bought the 50, I put an order in to buy the 4550 call spread and the 5550 put spread. Whichever one fills gets me out of the trade. And one of them is always going to fill for the most part. I got filled on the 5550 put spread for a buck 50. Remember, I sold the butterfly at two. Now I bought a put spread for 50 cents. I got a 50 cent credit going into the trade. Now, here comes the magic, guys. This is why I termed this Newton's Cradle. If you guys come up with a better name <laughs> on your own, let me know. But this is what I visually see when I watch my risk graphs change. The risk gets knocked from one side of the graph to the other side of the graph. Now, watch. I start out with the short butterfly, and then I buy the put spread, and then I end up with a long put spread on the other side. In other words, I bought the put spread. Wow, what's going on here? Hold on a second.
back with your slides. Yeah, my slide froze up. Hold on a second. I had a different slide on top of this. Oh, okay. It looks good. <laughs> I don't know what happened. But the short butterfly was right here. Let me draw a picture of that because I don't know what happened to it. Maybe I just screwed up the animations. That's always a possibility. But here's the short fly. Okay. Then I buy a put spread. And this put spread was going to cost me a buck fifty. And I end up with that green line. I don't know why. Maybe I grabbed the wrong set of slides, the ones I didn't save. Anyhow, it doesn't matter. I've got other examples that I'll show you. But this is the net result. Remember, what spread did I buy? I bought the 55-50 put spread. What happens? My short butterfly disappears. And what am I left with? A long put spread at the 50-45 strike. You can tell by looking at this that there's a short or a long put spread at the 50-45 strike, which is weird because I bought the 55-50. And what happened when I bought the put spread here, it knocked off my risk and ended up with the put spread on the other side. That's why I call it Newton's Cradle. And I got other graphs to show you because this one malfunctioned. But that green line, you can see. Well, let me do it this way. Here's the short graph. Short butterfly. Then I bought a put spread. Here's the put spread. Now it's working for some reason. And what do these net out to be? Ends up where the wrist disappears and I have a free spread. Remember, the risk of that short butterfly was in that pink box. So what happened with us? We bought the put spread. The risk of the fly vanishes. And the put spread squirted out the other side like Newton's cradle. How cool is that? What happened here? This is what happened. We put in a call spread. It wasn't filled because the market jumped up. Because the market jumped up, we bought the put spread. We couldn't buy the call spread. And then in the last couple minutes, what happened? We went from 43.56 to 43.49. Six points, which is not a lot, guys, in 10 minutes in the SPX. After we sold off, I said, hey, I've got this free put spread that you saw in the previous graph. Right here, you see, I got a, a free put spread. Okay, why not sell it out? So after I bought the put spread, now I end up with the free 50-45 put spread. I sold it out, got my dollar fifty back from the original purchase of the, butterfly, or the put spread at a higher strike. It forced me. For those guys who hate legs, here's the greatest way to leg. It forced me to be a good legger. It forced me to buy a butterfly for free. Because I needed to buy the 55-50 put spread to protect my position. I end up with a 50-45 for free. How do you screw up? If free goes out worthless, what do you lose? If free goes to value, put an order in to sell it out. See what you can get. Maybe a dollar, maybe two dollars. I just put it in for a dollar fifty because I was teaching a class and said, hey, you know what? It'd be pretty cool if I got a dollar fifty out of it. And so I put the order in to sell it at a dollar fifty. It actually went out at like a dollar sixty seven. I could have gotten more. But what you see here is when I sell the butterfly. I hedge it off with the long put, then spread that long put off. What do I do? 
the risk is gone and I locked in 200 bucks. Free money. Okay, that's the, the magic trick. Now, people will say, okay, that's a butterfly. What about other positions? You made it look easy with a butterfly, but I trade scarier ones. You can't do this with a condor. Sure you can. Okay? It cleans up other things. It slices, it dices, it julians your fries. Okay, here's an example. I'm from Chicago, so everything is an example. Here's the example of a condor. I screwed up. This trade was not supposed to happen. I'm sitting there just looking at different things, different prices. I've got a lot of screens up. I put up this order to sell the 15, 20, 25, 30 condor. And I unlocked it the price just to see how it was breathing throughout the day. I moved my mouse to the other side of the screen to a different screen, or I thought I did, to double click a message that was coming up in Skype. I didn't double click the message. I double clicked thinkorswim, hold the order up, and sent the order. And I sold it at 55. I didn't want to sell this at 55, especially with I got filled when we were going up, and then we started going down. I'm like, oh, crap. We're going to go right into my short condor. What can I do? I ran out and bought the 40, 35 put spread for the same 55 cents. And what happened? We went from a short condor to a long condor and a long put spread. Look at the zero line. There's zero risk. The condor that I took in 55 cents for and was risking 445 now has no risk. So when I screw up or I'm short a butterfly or at the end of the day, the market just parked at a certain place, I clean it up fast. And I'm not sweating being short a condor, I'm not sweating a loss area because I know how to Newton cradle this thing. And that's why my students have been bothering me and bothering me. They went from never show us a short butterfly. I would rather pay too much for the long butterfly than sell a butterfly to almost daily. Scott, can we sell another butterfly in the clothes? They're loving it. They're junkies. And it's fun because just sit there and wait and just put an order in on the call side for a buck, the put side for a buck. One of them always hits and then you're clean. And then it's like, now you're going for a free ride and locking in the profit. They're loving it. But that's why they're forcing me. I didn't even want to do it. They're forcing me to do a noon's cradle and a short, um, Noon's Cradle and Short Butterfly Slash Condor Class this weekend. And it's a very popular topic. Tom just did a workshop with it where me and Amy and a whole bunch of other people came in and discussed what we do with them. And it's very popular because it tends to be what most new to intermediate to slightly advanced traders are doing. And when you get trapped, think about it. You buy a butterfly for 30 cents, 10 times, it goes out worthless. You just lost 300 bucks. Or you're into a condor, accidentally short it because you stepped on the wrong strikes. Now you're looking at two contracts, you're looking at a $1,000 loss on an accident. Now I know that doesn't happen to you guys, but it happens to me. I've traded literally millions of contracts in my life. Without exaggeration, millions of contracts. And I still make mistakes, especially with the electronic system. It's too easy for me to push a button. When I was doing open outcry, the mistakes were a lot more infrequent. Believe it or not, when you see those pits and everyone's screaming and pushing and the hand signals, 
I made a lot less mistakes in that mess than online where just a click of a button and you hit the wrong. one strike off buy versus sell everything else that you have to line up with the technology I make a lot more mistakes clicking I can lose a thousand bucks or have a giant thousand dollar sinkhole all the time real fast people are like show me how to wiggle out of this and that's why we're having the class and Again, there's a bonus class for the layer spreads. I'm... But the thing that I wanted to really point out is the people who've gotten, you guys saw this flyer, I think, once before when I was doing Tom's workshop, or I mentioned it, at least. You see that, well, let me circle it so that you don't have to squint and find it. But right here, You see that all our early bird registration and discount prices and everything else end on August 25th and August 26th. The class is Saturday and Sunday. I think we got like three or four, no, three or four available seats. Literally, it's so, it's, this is going to be the fullest room I've ever had. And because of that, we're just going to fill it up first come, first serve and extend the early bird special. Um, I know we gave air mirror special pricing. We'll honor that pricing, whatever that was. Um, do you remember what it was, Tom? I think it's six fifty three. Okay. Tom would remember better than I do. Um, he spent a lot of time going close to the speed of light. So he aged slower than I, <laughs> so <laughs> his memory is better. But I think you're right. I think it's like 652, 653. We'll honor that price. Just contact the office. Also, okay. a lot of people. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tom. No, that's the link that Glenda gave me for for the Air America price. Okay. Yeah. Oh, she gave you a link. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So, and I see there's a couple questions. I'll get to it in a second. Let me just get through the sales pitch so I get rid of that. I, I hate doing sales pitches. So let me get done and then i'll be happy to answer questions but i had a lot of people in different classes that i taught this to and say hey can i get a copy of that class where you did the short fly and then hedged it real time yes everyone who signs up for the class automatically immediately gets an email where in their membership locker or There'll be a recording to the class on June 23rd where I did that butterfly sale for two bucks and hedged it and cleaned it up. You can hear I was not at all concerned or worried. You'll also get the class we did recently on advanced short butterflies. And it'll be sent immediately after you sign up. Um, and again, it's this Saturday and Sunday. And we're still offering the discounted rate just because we're full. It'll be full by the end of the day. And all the bonus materials come instantly. Now, people had questions. Would you do it on wide ones, like 20 or more, or stick with $5 verticals? It really doesn't matter. And here's why. Let me, let me explain it this way. There's a lot of things you can do with well i'll just use this page it's black so let me change the color to pen let's see you have a 44 40 20 put spread and it's going against you I can still give it a $5 stop loss. I can give it a $10 stop loss. Whatever your stop loss is, is fine. Just make sure that if the market's going to move five points against you, you want to have the opportunity for the market to move at least five points in your favor. For example, yesterday I legged into a condor with my students. I bought a put spread. I was going to let it go $10 against me. 
before I hedged it off. I wanted the market to go at least $20 in my favor before starting to hedge it off so that I have some kind of balanced risk reward ratio in there. The market went 30 or 30, about 30 points in my favor. And then I started hedging it off, but I was only going to let it go 10 points against me. It was a little $5 vertical and we turned it into a condor and it kind of looks like this now. With puts because I got a little bit fancy. But actually, it was a $10 put spread. Excuse me. It was a $10 wide put spread. And I just started selling $5 put spreads to hedge it everywhere. But it's the same thing. Now, what most people will think of is they bought a $20 put spread, sell a $20 put spread. So sell the $44.20, $4,400, and make a $20 wide butterfly. You can do that. That's not a problem. Or what else can you do? If you had the 40 20 put spread, you don't have to keep going down in $20 increments. You can, okay, if you bought this and sold this, you can sell the 35, go $20 wide, buy the 15. And now what do you have? You have on a $5 wide condor with. $15 separation between the strikes. Now, if that's if you're long. Short, it works the same way. Whether you're short a $5 condor, $5 butterfly, or a $30 wide condor, Newton's Cradle works the same way on everything. It's just, when do you get out? What strikes do you do? What side do you attack? Do you hit the put spreads or the call spreads to hedge it? There's a lot of little details, and that's why it's taken a whole weekend to teach this stuff. I have to teach a lot of criteria, which is just a fancy word for recipe. Okay, and just it's a cooking recipe. How do you do Newton's Cradle first? Pull up the option chain to second. Find out where your risk is, third, and just go through step-by-step -step procedures. But it takes a long time to go through every step and show you examples where it's going your way, going against you. Butterfly, condor, wide condor, iron condor, etc. Any other questions? I don't see any. Um I think I put everybody to sleep. <laughs> Normally, I'm a little bit more off color and at a slower pace. Well, I think people are still with you, but if pe if you haven't taken a class with Scott, I think you uh, should take advantage of this because uh, Scott's a great teacher, lots of experience, and um, it's like I always tell people: if you can learn one or two little tricks to add to your bag, it'll pay for itself in the long run. So, you know, it's uh, it's just extra stuff to learn and, and apply to what you do to, to make your returns better. And, um, yeah. And Tom and I see eye to eye on almost everything. And he does the same thing with his classes as I do with mine. And we do a lot of classes together where you see at the bottom, the price says effect of August 26th, it goes to seven ninety nine. Once this class is done, you can still buy the recording, but it is going to be seven ninety nine. As a matter of fact, yesterday, the day before, the day before that, I was having people buy my alchemy class at seven ninety nine. Now, do you remember where we sold that price? It was the ridiculous. Alchemy. It was ridiculous. It was like yeah. a typo. It was like half I, price or less. Yeah. It was less. No, it was like three ninety nine or something. It was like there was a typo on, like the office sent me a template to approve just the design. The grammar was wrong. Everything It hasn't been proof right yet. They're just worried about the art. Right. And I put that up during your class, as a matter of fact, and I'm like, Oh crap. I know it's not two ninety nine or three nineteen or whatever it was. Glenda was not happy with that. <laughs> Glenda, Glenda screwed up. She gave me the wrong thing. So, <laughs> Linda heard about it, but in the end, it was all my fault because I should have proofread it, right? 
but I was just running late for your class and just here, grab it. I'm like, oh crap, I don't think that's right. Oh well, we'll honor it. Yeah. Well, we were selling it for three hundred bucks. People were buying it for eight hundred yesterday. Right. You know? And it's worth eight hundred. I mean, I think the alchemy class is huge. It's a great class. Yep. It, it, one how to wiggle out of all kinds of trades. It's one trade it saves you eight hundred bucks. It's what I did on the floor to wiggle out of stuff. I think we sold it too cheap at eight hundred. But you know, it it Newton's cradle is the same philosophy. Wiggling out of losses is my primary concern. Okay, I know most people love the wins, but guess what? You're gonna have as many losses as you are gonna have wins. And how to handle the the losses is emotionally and financially draining. And knowing how to minimize that pain is worth a lot of money. And uh, James James just said day trading and alchemy are the best education dollars he's he's spent. Who's James who? James Anderson. Okay. I've got like fifty. Send him a t shirt or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll tell you, okay, I'll send him a t shirt. Actually, we have alchemy t shirts. There you go. You know, anyone who buys alchemy will get a t shirt here. Um while supplies last, but I we just had alchemy t shirts made up. And then Mike asked, How far out in time can you do these? As far out as you want. And we're gonna go through a lot of criteria in and again, this is gonna be a very fast paced class because I'm teaching three subjects in two days. There's a very good chance that I may have to add another day. You know, if people are tired, if I don't get it all done, if I get a lot of questions that have to, you know, slow the class down, I'll, I'll have another day. We'll have it like Monday or night or something for an extra couple hours until we're finished. I mean, literally, I think Alchemy, I threw in an extra day free because people just wanted to learn more and more. Um, or I threw in bonus trades or something. There was, a, I'm almost always giving more time than less. Um, but, um, yeah, if it, 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 it's a great class and yeah. Okay. There's a t-shirt. There's our alchemy <laughs> shirts. <laughs> did you get one yet, Tom? I did not. No, Gabby loves your strategy mug. She has her, her morning drink in that every day. Does she? Yep. You know what people are really digging? Okay. Gabby uh, laughed. She just heard that. <laughs> did she? Tell her I say hi. She's the greatest. But okay. you know what? In, in Vegas, I can't remember. Yeah, in Vegas or Maui. I can't remember which. But we always give out especially in live classes, we always give out something bigger, you know, instead of that stupid swag everybody gets at every convention they go to, where it's like they get a t-shirt or something. As I'm saying, we're giving out t-shirts, saying it's stupid swag, but literally at the bigger events, we give out bigger, like, swag. And um, the thing that... I'm having a hard time moving this. Oh, there we go. The, the, um, the most popular thing that we gave out was um, the wine bottles that we had our logo edged into. Right. And um, so now we were going to have a Maui class. Literally, we were going to announce it. Yeah, these things. These things were like super popular. It's like edged in there. It's not a label. But um, have you ever seen Ocean Vodka? Comes okay. in a round, comes in a round bottle. It's made in Maui, and it comes in a the coolest blue see through bottle, and it's just round, and it just sits on a desk, even balanced, and the nozzles coming out the side. It's the coolest marketing bottle I've ever seen. We were gonna buy a hundred of those things, bottles for like we. This wine wasn't cheap. This wasn't like Mad Dog fifty fifty. I think the the wine was like forty dollars a bottle to start with before the etching. But we're going to buy like $40 bottles of vodka, ocean vodka, and have the Maui 2024 logo put into it and everything. But 
it's a little insensitive to go to Maui at this time. Yeah, they've had some problems. And they've got fires. a lot of they got a lot of problems with the fire. So I don't know what we're gonna do. Literally, the day we were gonna announce Maui twenty twenty four, the fire broke out. <laughs> so thank God it wasn't like announced and then you know the fire broke out and then we have to like tell people cancel your flight <laughs> right so because literally people book a flight that day and now they're in trouble but um yeah who, who asked who did you give away one of my t-shirts to oh it was john uh john john anderson, john anderson james anderson james James, email my office, admin at stratagem.com. Tell him what he, size he shirt said, you wear. He said he'll take one. Tell him what size you want. Tell him you want it, and they'll send it out to you this weekend. Okay, we've got a lot of them. Um, this is some people's favorites. I don't. I came up with this idea, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is like a little off color. I like the, the bull one. Did you get the bull one, Tom? No. Oh, I'll have the office send you a bull one. Um, <laughs> here, look, I'll show you that. Um, you know, it's that is a good see. one. It's hard to see it. I saw um, it. <laughs> some things got enhanced in this picture. So, okay. Um, that one's my favorite, but I've never been accused of being politically correct. You can take me off the trading floor, but you can't take the trading floor out of me. Okay, James, you got a t-shirt. Just let the office know what size and we'll send them out. Oh, black or white. We got them in both black and white. We may be out of your favorite. Well, then we'll give you the other. If you ask for black, you may end up with a white if we're out of black ones. I mean, we, we make like a hundred of these things and they're going fast. You know, just like the the bull and bear coins we were giving away, those things like went. I went through sleeves of these things, the one ounce coins. Oh right, went through those things fast. Okay, guys. All right, Scott. Any thanks so much, Tom. Any questions? Feel free to uh, contact me. Email the office. There goes your plane. Love, love the T-38. That was some airplane. Yeah. See, every time, you don't notice this, but every single time you get a new image, though, Tom. This is not the same T-38 as last time. Okay. I put smoke on this one, too. You need one with uh, Vance Air Force Base, tail number, VN is the letters. Okay. I dated, a, <laughs> I dated a girl for a while whose sister was the the first or second f-22 pilot oh nice and she, but they stationed her in alaska her tail number i think was ak something or other yeah yeah that makes sense i don't know i was like doing everything i could to go on a ride with it but they wouldn't let me yeah those are hard to get yeah yeah well they're one-seater planes right so yeah, they, they, they only, they, they only had the trainer, trainer. i was trying yeah. to get in the trainer and they like I'll fly out to Alaska right now. No, can't do it. <laughs> All right, so. Scott. Appreciate it as always. And uh, again, if anybody's on the fence, just uh, just do it. I mean, you're you're gonna learn some stuff that you can apply the rest of your trading life. So it's uh, definitely worth it, and uh, highly highly recommended. Scott's a great guy, great teacher, and uh, you know, don't hesitate. Just uh, just join the class. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks so much. And Tom, what size are you? Like extra large or two X? Uh probably do XL. I've been losing okay. weight. I lost like twenty five pounds. Not from your pizzas. No, well everything in moderation, right? So <laughs> I don't know what moderation is. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a French word. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the French. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Scott. Thanks, everyone. And we will see you next time. And I won't be there for the class this week. We're flying tomorrow to Oregon to visit family. So, yeah. Well, I'm glad to send you the link so you can watch the recording anytime you want. Yeah. And uh, if anybody has any questions with the spreadsheet, just let me know. Oh, yeah. I didn't pull that up. But Tom made a spreadsheet for you guys for taking this class that has the short butterflies in there. Yeah. It makes it dead simple to put it in a think or swim. So I use it all the time. It is, it is brilliant.
All right, guys. Well, thanks, Scott. We'll uh, see you next time. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All Have right. a good night. Take care.